I believe we wanted to start with uh, our Monterey Jack cheese. Um, and I'm the, I'm the guilty guy that uh, chose the cheeses for this afternoon. Um, but I'm going to let Ken kind of give you uh, his profile of, of or evaluation of the products that are in front of us. Um, Cause I always think of a cheese grater as, is when he looked at that cheese, it was perfect. And now he's going to tell you what might be wrong with it. One of the things you notice about our, our Kojak is that it's exactly what it says. The white is Monterey, the colored is Colby. Mm-hmm. And uh, in some cases, people would try to sneak the color in and don't blend it totally through the vat and do that. We actually take two vats and blend them together. So we can truly get a Monterey and a Colby out of it. And so that's what it truly is. And we're looking for that real young flavor, the flavor that will allow us to to profile that and show that off. And uh, you're always, you know, what you're looking for of much of anything is that in the white here, the white portion of it is very crystalline. It's very clear. So what happens is as clear as it is, that means that the curd was totally separated and it wasn't in the same vat. Otherwise, you'll get some parts that are a bit orange, a bit this, a bit that, and the color is never real, real distinct, but these are. But you can actually take each of those pieces, should you choose to, pull it apart and look at it, and you'll get the same body. You'll be able to tell what part was Colby and what part was Monterey. In this case, I think it's a pretty good example of, of what we make each and every day. It's probably got a little age on it because it's a little softer than, than what it would be if it was a week old or, or two weeks old. Um, but it's something that if I was going to cook and, and make a simple sauce or, or specifically uh, Colby Jack is something that kids absolutely love. And so if I was going to make a grilled cheese sandwich, this, uh, this appeals to my grandchildren. Right. But no the, the biggest thing about it is, in all honesty, is that They've got these cheeses out, so they are room temperature. Yeah, yeah. We, warm, and, we and warmed ours up. You're, you're looking at that, and there's a specific reason. Cheese is always graded at that point. That's where you look at it. That's what you want it to be. That's what you want to see. If you're having it at a party, one of the best things you can do is serve it. Anybody making a cheese platter and putting it out for guests, you know, please do me a favor. You know, grab it and have it out for a while. It's like... It's no different than your wine. Some of you people are winemakers. And the biggest thing about it is make sure that, you know, it got a chance to breathe. Give it a chance. And you'll see that that seems to be the best of the best. And that's where you get your best return on what you've got. So, so what do you guys usually pair with this? Beer. Sorry. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's Wisconsin, so Miller Lite. <laughs> Miller Lite yeah. or- we, uh, yeah, the, uh, you know, it's, it's a pretty mild cheese, so I might throw even a, a young fruity wine at it, um, be it a red or in the summer months, I'm just going to go with a Sauvignon Blanc or something like that. So it's going to be nice. It's clean or, you know what, Coors Light, Miller Light, whatever kind of, uh, Pilsner you might want, it's going to be nice, clean and and uh, the effervescence so, of the beer is going to clean up the your one, palate. The one thing about this cheese is the idea that um, for kids, it goes good with milk, especially, you know, the chocolate milk. Mm-hmm. And uh, we, being that we also bottle milk that we didn't talk about, we don't plant, but uh, we also make other milks. When we talked about being unusual, we'll do, you know, the 1% to 2%, the whole milk and, and the chocolate milk. Well, in addition to that, we also do strawberry we also do some unusual flavors we do a, a root beer a mint a mint milk right now is probably the biggest one because it's saint patty's day we're right behind that and, and the mint milk is just unbelievably yeah, that is good. good and it's it's the most refreshing we are we today are missing the boat in the milk category by not looking at more flavors and you can make those so refreshing to people. And like with this cheese, it, it's refreshing. We always have to that refreshment. So. 
there's a, a nice buttery quality with it. There's a tanginess to it. You know, this appeals right across the board. It's just such a nice snacking cheese. And, and, I, and I have to imagine it's so well to melt as, as well. Uh, I paired it with the uh, uh, Mango Chutney, uh, Perseverance sure. Society. Uh, Mango Chutney, by the way, is the number one condiment in the world, uh, which I didn't know that, just found that out. And uh, it just adds to a little bit of sweetness and the tanginess goes through there. And then as you were saying with beer, uh, I went with the uh, sweet water. Uh, this is their 420, uh, their pale ale, extra pale ale. Oh, and okay. uh, I thought about doing the lager on it or a pilsner, but with all the tanginess in here, this can really stand up to some more hoppiness. And so I really wanted to push it up a little bit more. And there's nothing that it's definitely does well with, uh, you know, the loggers or pilsners. But uh, for me, I, I just wanted a little bit more hoppiness. But sure. magnificent. You're really a hoppy. You're nice. a hoppy guy, Mike. And and you know what was really nice about this is that you know when you're when you're cutting cheese when you're preparing it, uh, a lot of times you run into uh, uh, that it either uh, flakes away or it uh, sticks to your knife. This is just such a nice consistency. You know, I did cool, uh, cut it a little cool and let it warm up. But I have to say that, uh, you know, getting this in for a presentation. Uh, let me show you my uh, little cheese board here. I, uh, I, I pulled everything out. But what I have to say is it was so nice uh, cutting everything. All of these cheeses here were really simple and easy to cut. Oh, sure. I, I really love that. I think building a cheese board... Uh, I'm a total anti-cube uh, guy. I don't want any cube. And I'm also a, a little bit of uh, I, not wanting to put any fruit in. If I'm going to do fruit, a lot of times I'm going to go and uh, do something uh, like uh, a spread. Kind of like the mango chutney. Sure. You know, who wants to mess with mangoes? Yeah, right. But they're, they're a lot of work. <laughs> they are. So anything else you want to say about this beautiful cheese? Just that it's got, like David said before, the most important thing about it is its versatility. I mean, yeah. if you wanted to use it on a cheeseburger, use it on a cheeseburger. If you want to use it for a, a table cheese as a, a snack, it's great. If you want to use it as something that goes with something late at night, a, a wine, a beer, a, a, a final end of day, it'll do that. It'll yeah. do it quite well. So, All very right. good. Go ahead. I was going to say very good. One of the things I always find is uh, people forget about cheese in the morning. So, and there's, there's nothing better than a cheese omelet of some sort. And obviously this one would easily incorporate into uh, an omelet. Um, cheese sandwich. Cheese sandwich. It's perfect for that. Yeah. Cheesy French toast. Yes. 